Hello everyone, today we will be learning about amphiprotism. Now amphiprotic substances, they have the ability to either act as BL acids or BL bases. In other words, BL stands for Bronsted & Lowry and that means they can either donate protons or accept protons. So for example, we have water that can accept or donate a proton. We have carb uh, hydrogen carbonate, the ion, that can accept or donate. We have hydrogen sulfate, the ion as well. We have hydrogen phosphate, both able to donate and accept. And we have hydrogen sulfide, which is HS with a minus on top, that can both accept and donate. Now looking at water first, we have it acting as a proton donor here. In other words, acting as an acid. So here we have it reacting with sulfide. When it reacts with sulfide, it's going to donate a proton, as in a hydrogen ion, and form hydroxide ion. And there's going to be hydrogen sulfide, the anion, being formed. Now it acting as a base or a proton acceptor is hydrogen sulfate reacting with water and what happens is the hydrogen from the hydrogen sulfate is going to be accepted by water to form a hydronium ion and in that process we have a sulfate ion also being produ produced there. Now hydrogen carbonate, very similar process happening again. We have hydrogen carbonate reacting with a hydroxide ion and in this case it's acting as a acid so when it's acting as an acid, what happens is it's going to donate one hydrogen ion to form a carbonate ion and water. And when it's acting as a base, it's going to react with the hydronium ion to produce the carbonic acid and water. So it's just accepting a proton from the hydronium ion to form water and carbonic acid. Now with carbonic acid, it decomposes to form water and carbon dioxide. So that's a very a side note about carbonic acid. If you're looking at the hydrogen sulfate ion, it acting as an acid, so it's except donating a proton. It's donating a proton to the hydronium ion to form water. And in that process, the hydrogen sulfa sulfate ion is going to form a sulfate anion. Again, it acting as a base, what happens is our hydrogen sulfate reacting with hydronium ion. So it's going to accept a proton this time from the hydronium ion. When the hydronium ion gives out a proton, it becomes water. And when the hydrogen sulfate gains a proton, it becomes um, sulfuric acid. And note with all these reactions, when it gains a proton, it, it gains a charge as well. So in this case, it becomes from minus to zero charge. But when it gives away a hydrogen, it loses a charge. So plus to zero, as you can see. Now let's look at what amphiprotic and amphoteric has in common and also how they differ. Now amphiprotic is not the same as amphoteric. This is a very, very important point you have to know. And a lot of students get very dis um, confused about it because they have quite a similar spelling there. But amphiprotic is different to amphoteric. Looking at amph amphoteric first, we have amphoteric is a substance that can act as an acid or a base. In other words, it can react with either. So examples of them are oxides of zinc and aluminium and these are the common ones so zinc oxide and aluminium oxide these are amphoteric substances because they can react with both acids and bases now amphiprotic amphiprotic substances that can donate or accept a proton in other words according to Bronsted and Lowry's theory they are acids or bases in different cases so here we have hydrogen sulfate and water as two examples of amphiprotic substances and this is clearly the difference between the two and it's very very important to know that they're not the same they're different 
and know how they differ. Now just reviewing back to what we learned, we learned about amphiprotism. In other words, a substance's ability to donate or accept a proton in two different reactions. So let's look at some questions. Question 12. Which of the following is not an amphiprotic species? In other words, which of these cannot both donate and accept a proton? We have question, uh, option A. Now option A, can it donate and accept a proton? Yes, it can uh, donate and accept a proton, so it's not the correct answer. So option A is incorrect. Now we have option B, which is uh, hydrogen phosphate, the ion. Now is it able to donate and accept a proton? Yes, if it donates a proton, it becomes a phosphate ion. If it accepts a proton, it becomes H2PO4 with the minus on the top. So clearly, this is able to donate and accept a proton, so it's incorrect. Now we have option D, which is carbonic, the ion, the hydrogen carbonate. Now if hydrogen carbonate accepts a proton, it becomes carbonic acid. If it donates a proton, it becomes a carbonate ion. So it is able to donate and accept a proton, so this is incorrect. Now we have C, which is the phosphoric acid, so H3PO4. Now this is not able to accept a proton, because if it accepts a proton, it's going to be H4PO4 with a plus on the top, and that doesn't exist. But it is able to donate a proton, and it will form this molecule here. So as you can see, C cannot accept a proton, because of that, it's the correct answer. So C is the answer for question 12. Now question 13. The dihydrogen phosphate ion is amphiprotic. Use balanced equations to show the amphiprotic nature of this equation. So this part here, balanced equations, you have to use them and you have to make sure all your equations are balanced and all the states are written because in this question a lot of focus is given to your equations and it's testing for your equation writing. So here our species is dihydrogen phosphate ion. That means it's going to have two hydrogens, it's a phosphate ion. That means it's going to have a minus charge. So dihydrogen phosphate ions acts as an acid in the presence of hydroxide ions in this way. We have the dihydrogen phosphate ion, this is how you would write it. And when it acts, uh, reacts with the hydroxide ions, it's going to act as an acid. In other words, it's going to donate a proton. When it donates a proton to the hydroxide ion, it forms water. And a, hydrogen, a dihydrogen phosphate ion would become a hydrogen phosphate ion. So it's going to lose a hydrogen. When it loses a hydrogen, always remember to lose a charge in, at the same time. Now dihydrogen phosphate ions act as bases in the presence of hydronium ions in a hydrochloric acid solution. So in other words, what happens is we have our dihydrogen phosphate ion reacting with the hydronium ions from the hydrochloric solution. And when it reacts with this, it's going to accept a proton. When it accepts a proton from our hydronium ion, it's going to form phosphoric acid, H3PO4. And our hydronium ion, when it gives away a hydrogen ion, becomes water. So as you can see, it's, gained a it's lost a charge and our dihydrogen phosphate ion has gained a charge because it's gaining a hydrogen ion. And that's how question 13 would go. So you have to always make sure your equations are balanced and they have states written because a main focus is given to your equations and balancing them. Question 14, it says to identify the conjugate acid of the chloride ion. In other words, what's the conjugate acid of a chloride ion is something that has an extra hydrogen in it. So in other words, it's going to be hydrochloric acid, HCl. Now question 15, it's asking to identify the conjugate base of hydrogen sulfide, sulfate ion. So this is one hydrogen sulfate. Now the conjugate base is something that loses a hydrogen, so that means it's going to be a sulfate ion. Make sure and don't forget to put minus a charge. When you're losing a hydrogen, always minus a charge at the same time. So you would get sulfate ion with two minus. Now that brings us to the end of the lesson. In this lesson we learned about amphiprotism. In other words, 
when a substance acts as a proton donor as well as a proton acceptor. And we did consider a few of them like water and also dihydrogen phosphate.